and welcome to She Thinks, a podcast where you're allowed to think for yourself. I'm your host, Beverly Hallberg, and on today's episode, we are discussing a heavier issue. It's the issue of gun violence, specifically in schools, and what, if anything, can be done about it. And after the recent shooting in Colorado this week, I think it's a perfect time to talk about this. And we are especially honored to have a very special guest on today, Andrew Pollock, who is an American school safety activist. You may actually be familiar with him um, because Andrew goes around the country, speaks on these issues, and is very vocal. His 18-year-old daughter, Meadow Pollock, was killed in the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida on February 14th, 2018, and he's dedicated his life to educating parents about safety in schools. He's credited with helping to pass the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Act. He has met with President Donald Trump and his cabinet and many lawmakers, and he's actively fighting to increase more federal funding to increase school security in every school across the nation. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on today and taking the time to talk with us. Uh, I'm glad to be here. And we we actually have you on this podcast today where there has been another shooting in a school in Colorado. And before we even jump into all of the work that you're doing to educate parents, I, I just wanted to first start with and with you and seeing if you had any opinion on the situation that happened there and anything from your work where you would say, here's how we could have prevented it or here's something that we could do. But anything at all that you, you can say to start us off today on, on what your response and reaction reactions are to the latest tragedy that happened in Colorado? Well, first, you know, it's a it's horrible tragedy when something like this happens because there's nothing worse than losing a child. And now there's another family uh, that lost their son, uh, you know, who was a senior like my daughter and their lives will be changed forever. Like mine, mine, I'll never get my life back. But what parents should know now is no one educated me. Uh, where I sent my daughter to school. I didn't know that they, they only had one officer there. I didn't know they were leaving the gates open. I didn't know that they had sociopaths that they mainstreamed with my daughter at the school. Parents now, through, through my advocacy and a lot of people, they have to know what's going on in their child's school. Okay, you need the gates locked. You, you, you should look into these if they're mainstreaming sociopaths or, or criminals uh, that shouldn't be with your kids uh, that I didn't know about, I have to live with it forever. So parents need to get involved in their local school district so this don't happen. You know, they had one officer, not even a, an SRO, there was a, one security guard there at the school. Uh, and I don't think one's enough. So parents need to get involved. Uh, teachers, you know, we passed some bills now uh, teachers could actually be trained because, you know, when you look at when there's a shooting, it's seconds that count. Okay. Seconds. And when you need the police, they're minutes away. So within seconds, multiple kids could be killed. So, so when I look at security, it's at, it's in a, it's at different tiers. Okay. You have your perimeter that you got to look at with the schools is their open campus Do they have single point of entries how many security guards you know and also in a lot of schools now we passed it in florida they're able now some of the teachers that voluntarily want to go through a program will be able to carry uh, at the school which is another big plus and it's only a tier you know a lot of these liberals are all up in arms and democrats about all oh, arming it's not about arming teachers it's about arming people at the school, the personnel that voluntarily want to go through 150 hours of training and be able to protect their kids and themselves at a school. And let's face it, society, as you can see, is screwed up. We can't fix society, but you owe it to your kids when you send them to the school to know that they're safe. And and I want to jump in here. One of the things I was wondering about, so obviously you are out here educating people based on something horrific that happened to you and losing your daughter Meadow on February 14th, 2018. When it comes to school safety, was this a topic 
we were even concerned about before. And there, there's no new polling out that shows that more and more parents are concerned about the safety of their children at school. Were you ever worried about Meadow and her safety? Or did you think everything oh, was going fine? And then this happened. That's a big problem. You know, uh, I didn't. And look what happened to me. I didn't look at the school. I lived in a, you know, in a suburb where it's, you know, it, it could never happen. And it did happen. I lived in an upper, you know, beautiful neighborhood in, in, in a suburb, uh, upper middle class. Average probably house was uh, in that area is 500000 And I, I thought I'm, I'm doing a, a great thing, sending my daughter to get a good education. But little do I know that school board there in Broward is run by unethical liberal uh, people and bureaucrats that are unethical. And they don't, they didn't believe in holding kids accountable. Uh, it was a whole program, uh, through the Obama administration of, uh, to end the school to prison pipeline. So they created this leniency programs in Broward where they don't arrest kids. And I didn't know that. And this is called restorative. This is, this is called restorative justice, correct? That's, that's the phrase we've talked about on this podcast before. Yeah. Yeah. They divert these kids. Okay. Which. Every kid should deserve a chance. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, you know, let's not do anything for these kids that have issues or kids that want, you know, kids are going to mess up. They're going to get in trouble, but they need accountability in life. Okay. And some kids shouldn't be mainstreamed. They mainstream a sociopath to go to school with my daughter and all those good kids, you know, that wanted to just go there and learn. And I didn't know about these things. Okay. And I didn't know they were leaving the gates open and I didn't know they had a guy there that that was on his last leg who's a, a, a police officer, you know, and no protocols in place for code reds. So I, I didn't take an interest. I didn't know. But the parents now, that's why I'm, I, I educate people. They should know better now. Parents need to know better where they send their kids and they have options. Okay. I don't well, want to hear. I can't. Yeah. Well, let's. So, I want to stop you there because I think this is an important part for the parents listening on on this show. What questions should they ask the school board or the teacher, or what should that process be like of questioning the school if you want to make sure that your child is is being set up for success when it comes to safety, or is at least as best as one can? Sure. Well, first, you want to see if they're participating in those restorative justice programs. Okay. What What's the criteria for, for children going to your school? Like in Broward, they'll, Broward at ground zero where my daughter was murdered, they still have these programs and the same people are in place in Broward. So everybody knows that sends their kids to school in Broward, there is another sociopath in every school that they're still sending their kids with. So Broward, they know. So they could ask, uh, first of all, they should go to the school after they drop their kids off and see how the school was closed. You know, uh, just take a look. Go for yourself. See, is it safe? Are the doors locked? Are the gates locked? How easy is it to get in? Okay. And then and ask, ask if there's a police officer there. Ask him. Talk to the police officer. Go, what's the proto- are protocols in place? Uh, are they practicing the code red drills? You know, does everybody know what to do? And then, and also the police officer will know about that restorative justice because most of them are against it you know, but they have no say, you know, it's all the school board. And so we know to the extent, so the, the murderer, the one who murdered your daughter, um, don't even want to really say his name because I don't like to give any Uh, notoriety. Yeah. I'm curious from you just as a refresher, what was in his background that, that should have even criminally, he should have been um, dealt in a criminal sense, not just that he was misbehaving in school. What were some of those things that the school overlooked? Well, it's, it, Actually, the sheriff also signed on to this program because we had a sheriff who politicized his department and because so his crime stats look better. okay? because they stop arresting kids. Right. So his his felony rates come down. All his crime comes down. Statistically, they look safer. Yeah. Statistically, they look safer. (laughs) The appearance. So meanwhile, he was removed. So your audience knows we have a great governor that I worked with. And he removed the sheriff for his incompetence 
uh, on the uh, on what happened in Parkland shooting, on his response with his deputies, and on uh, the airport shooting, on his response. So the de- the sheriff Israel was removed. So he was actually there was over forty calls to this individual's house between him and his brother. Uh, uh, multiple times, uh, you know, he punched his mother's teeth out where she needed $8,000 worth of dental work. Uh, he, there was numerous calls to the police that he was going to shoot the school up. There was calls to the FBI he was going to shoot the school up. He was killing dead animals on the street. It's all on the calls. Uh, he trespassed at the school after he threatened to shoot the school up. He was at the school trespassing, and no, nothing was done. He wore swastikas to the school on his wrists. He had the N-word on his backpack. Uh, you know, he was constantly uh, with racial slurs at the school. He vandalized uh, the school. Uh, you know, he would hide in with camouflage on and scare kids. And it, you as a parent, a thing. yeah, and you as a parent, you were never informed that this person was going to school with your daughter, correct? So this isn't something that no, I, parents are informed of. I wouldn't know, and if they snuck this in in most of the public schools throughout the country. You know, they snuck these programs in uh, when when Arnie Duncan was uh, Department of Education secretary. It started, and they they snuck in these programs, and, and it doesn't work. You know, I, kids need accountability. So in actuality, I look at these programs and I think it's racist because they take these these kids that are committing crimes. Okay, a lot of them are at risk youth, and they don't point them in the right direction. Okay, at an early age when they're juveniles, where where they don't have a permanent record, so they don't hold them accountable. And then when they turn 18, they're committing felonies because they don't know right from wrong, and now they're messed up for the rest of their lives with a felony on their background. So, be, being uh, involved with uh, the the Santa's transition team, uh, when, when he became the governor, I met with numerous sheriffs throughout the state of Florida. And they told me that it's very important at an early age to get these juveniles when they're committing crimes and try and teach them at that age, or most likely they're going to end up in the system throughout their whole lives. So by not holding them accountable, it sets them up for failure when they become adults. And I'm curious from you personally, so I'd love to know what you were doing prior to this. I doubt that you working with um, legislators on legislation was your job prior to February 14th, 2018. What were you doing before and wh- what was it about you saying, I'm going to dedicate my life to do this? What what was that in you or what made you decide that that was the direction you wanted to go with, with the tragedy that happened? Wow. The love for my daughter, yeah. you know, that, that, that's what really did it for me. You know, I, I love my daughter so much and to set her up at that school, it just kills me. And, and holding these people accountable, these unethical people in Broward that are horrible, horrible people, what they did to these kids. And they refuse to accept responsibility, these Democrats in Broward. Uh, and they, uh, no one's ever did hurt me as bad as what these people did in Broward and yeah. refused to accept any responsibility. None of them. You, you know, I had a kid, my, my son, Hunter. This is how I describe it. Anytime something broke, anytime he took something from me, he never, he would always say, wasn't me. You know what I mean? My son, wasn't me. Well, these people in Broward with all these numerous failures, even this piece of garbage sheriff is trying to get his job back. Uh, when he had numerous failures, in his response to the shooting, where his deputies took a perimeter and didn't go in and listen to shots of kids getting killed and didn't go in the building. He's saying it wasn't him. The superintendent who brought the diversionary programs to Florida, uh, to Broward County from Chicago, it wasn't him either. He didn't do anything wrong. All the teachers uh, that failed that day, they, they, they put them on administrative leave, like four of them. They didn't do anything wrong. The monitor at the gate uh, who let him in, who recognized Crazy Boy coming in off the street, uh, and and the gate was wide open and never called the code red. He didn't do anything wrong either. It wasn't him. 
And then you got his mental health, Henderson Health in Broward County, uh, who was actually under, he was under their care for six years. Okay. They would go to his house, to his family's house and try and counsel him where he, they knew he killed animals. They gave him an air assault gun. He was playing violent video games like, uh, 10 hours a day. Uh, they were concerned one summer there was a hatchet missing out of the, out of the shed. You know, he was dreaming of blood going to this Henderson health, but yet they mainstream him with all these kids that just wanted to go there and learn. They had to mainstream a sociopath like this with my daughter. So this is what drives me be dealing with these unethical people like this who don't look at these facts, but they want to just blame the gu- guns. Okay. Right. And that's why I fight so hard to educate parents of all those numerous failures. I just said, they want to just blame it. It was the gun. It wasn't just a gun. And, and that's why I fight these people because it's, it's, uh, it's a distraction and they deflect with this gun control from what we should be doing is fixing our schools, hardening our schools, more mental health care for these kids and not mainstreaming every single kid because let's face it, Meadow, where was Meadow's rights going right. to that school or all those other kids that want to be with their friends and just learn at the school, hang out, have a good time, go to parties, you know what I mean? And they want to go there and get educated, but no, they have no rights. 99.9% of the kids, their rights, no rights, but they want to take a kid with special needs who's a sociopath and give him more rights than thousands of kids at the school and mainstream. And, well, and that's if, what's going on in the country. And and you, of course, hit the nail on the head with what people tend to turn to. This would be a, the media narrative, but often even what individuals think the answer is, which is more gun control. So we automatically go to the discussion of guns. When, when you hear people go to the topic of guns, do you just automatically think to yourself, not only are you missing the point, but this is just continuing to make our schools less safe if that's what we're focused on? I don't even bother with them to tell you the truth. I don't have the time for them. Like, I'm so proud of the kids. If you watch, I saw some video they sent me. Uh, oh, the kids walked out of the vigil last night, yesterday at, in Colorado at the STEM school. They yeah. walked out because they had some, again, these Democrats were at, the, at this vigil and they started politicizing with the gun control and that moms demand action another another group doesn't look at these kids were mainstream they one was a true well, nothing wrong with transgender but you know one was a transgender one had other issues on drugs uh, no mental health you know let's focus on the mental health and how about hardening the schools right you know a school would you would anyone send their kid on a plane uh, if they knew there was no metal detectors or uh, any type of security that you could just walk on a plane after what we know. No one would even go on the plane. I'm not going on that plane. But yet these schools are, are sitting targets, soft targets. And that's why these kids go there. It's, they know they're not looking at them. It, it, it's, it's horrible, but the last few school shootings, uh, these kids, are just they just take them in and they have no fear. I guess there's no fear about being in prison anymore for the rest of their lives. Uh, I guess they people don't fear that anymore. So... It, that's why they go to these soft targets. I want to talk a little bit about your experience and working with um, elected officials. You mentioned Florida Governor Rick Scott. I know you've done a lot in your home state of Florida, but you also, you've met with President Trump and his cabinet. First of all, what has it been like to be on the forefront of talking through what what policy changes could we make? And what has the backlash been like for you, for you since you are so vocal about like you've mentioned this podcast, Democrats who are hiding from the issue. Have you received a lot of backlash for, for your stance that you're taking? Uh, I don't really listen to them. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I'm pretty tough. And I, I just like what inspires me is that these people are so unethical and they think so differently than I do that I, I just like destroying them whenever I can. And, and that's why my Twitter's on fire. You know, if anyone wants right. to follow my Twitter, Andrew Pollock FL, 
If you look at my Twitter, I just have no patience for these people that don't think the way that a majority of the country really does. And we're going to see it, you know, in the 2020 election. We want our kids safe, okay? That's what we want. I want parents to know they're going to send their kids to school and they're just going to be safe. A kid shouldn't have to worry in their classrooms that someone's going to be able to come into the school and, and shoot them. You know, look, the last few shootings, it was pistols. You know, it wasn't even rifles. Uh, so kids need to be safe in the school, and I think a majority of, of the parents are getting it, and, and that's what Americans really want. But getting back to your question, the president, I did so much work with the president uh, on his federal school safety commission, and uh, the president did put an end to uh, the, gov- the government pushing those Obama policies, of uh, those diversionary restorative justice. He ended it, his administration and his uh, and the commission. But he didn't get any uh, he didn't get any uh, media attention for that because that that been you know that's not what the media does with the president. But he ended it. But. What parents need to know, just because the president ended it at at his level, your local school boards are like uh, they have their own Vatican in your own county. The school boards do whatever they want. They don't have to listen to the president. They don't. uh, My governor in Florida is a great governor. They don't need to listen to him. They do their own thing at a local level. So that's why it's very important for parents to educate themselves and the Republicans, thank God we have a Republican Senate, a Republican house and a Republican governor in Florida because they were, they were able to look, you know, they put together that MSD commission where they came up with all the findings of what went wrong in the shooting with the response. And they looked at that and they just passed some more laws to make our kids safer in Florida, all Republicans. And I'm assuming even beyond the lawmakers, I'm, I'm assuming you you obviously talk a lot to parents because you're out there educating. Do you find that regardless of somebody's political party, many parents are thanking you for the work that you're doing on this? Well, listen, parents, I'm, it doesn't really matter. I don't care what party you're with, you know, right. but you, should, you need to look at the facts. Parents, okay, you want to be a Democrat. That's no problem. Uh, I don't have a problem with being a Democrat, but don't you want your kids safe when you go to school? Or you want uh, no gun zone signs, the gates open, and nobody there to protect your kids? You know, all these people, they want to sell me, oh, we don't want to arm teachers. We don't. Okay, so let me ask you something. I, I say to them, if your daughter was on the third floor and there's no one around and there's someone walking down the hallway with a rifle, some sociopath, and he's killing kids one after the other, and your kids lined up, your kids the next one to be shot. Wouldn't you want a highly trained teacher there to save your kid? You know, it's really not that difficult. So Democrats need to stop looking at agendas and put the safety of their kids first. Do you think... And and then we could get a lot more done. Do you think that... So you mentioned what um, President Trump has done from the federal level. Do you see that schools on their own are starting to make these changes? Do you think that schools are realizing that the restorative justice model is not as effective as they thought? Do do you see schools waking up to this on their own? Well, in Broward County, no. And that's when my daughter was murdered. It's a mega school district, uh, Broward County. Uh, their budget is about four billion dollars a year. Okay, so they're not—they don't see it. Uh, other places are seeing it, you know, and they're taking security. And I can't just say, listen, I was in New Jersey a couple of months ago, and it's very democratic, and they took it very serious. Their security at the, at the school—they had like seven retired police officers armed wow. at the school for like uh, fifteen hundred kids, and they had a dog. That's why I went there. They named the dog. It sounds a little not after my daughter, but they, they're training dogs now for active shooters. So a dog uh, will never cower and it goes right towards the shooter if there's a situation. And that's the school I went to in Jersey. So parents have a choice. You know, you could send your kid. You want to just say, OK, I'm not, it's never going to happen to me. I'm sure that kid's father yesterday said it. It's not going to happen to my kid. And his kids, 
got murdered at the school like my daughter. Well, I thought it couldn't happen to me. So, you, like I said, parents, it's up to you to look into your school district and see, do they participate in those restorative justice programs? Do they have enough armed guards? Are the doors locked? What's their protocols? It's not that hard to find out. And final question for you. I know you've given us some tips on what parents can do, but is there a website or a place people can go to to learn more about um, what you're advocating for? Anything we can direct people to on this podcast? Well, mostly uh, right now I'm on my Twitter mostly, Andrew Pollock FL, and my Facebook. If they don't have Twitter, they can go to Andrew Pollock Parkland Parent. Like I said, there's nothing worse than not being able to pick your kid up. And don't make it about money, you know what I mean, uh, yeah. with private school, with homeschooling, because you owe it to your kids. Look at me. I failed my daughter sending her to that school. Uh, parents know better now. It's 2019. There's been these school shootings that happened to me. Parents should know better now where you send your kids. Well, Andrew, I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing these tips, also being so honest about what you've experienced. And I think on behalf of all parents out there, I think we are we all are thankful that you are out there trying to change the way schools practice safety and change things. So I know that you've you've dedicated your life to this, and I think many parents thank you for it. So on behalf of all them, I want to thank you for what you're doing and also for joining us today. Oh, you're very welcome. One more thing. This is yeah. independent women, right? Yes. So independent. So I got a message for all the independents out there, women, because it's very, my wife's an independent woman. She's an ER doctor. We need some Republican conservative women out there to run for Congress. Okay. That's my message out there. After seeing the state of the union address and what went on and what's going on with the country, we need some independent conservative women to run for Congress. That's my message. Well, we, we're we hearing okay. your message, Andrew. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate you. your time. All right. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. If you found this episode of She Thinks Helpful and want other parents to hear, do share. We'd appreciate it. And if you feel so inclined, do leave us a rating or review on iTunes. It definitely helps. So from all of us here at the Independent Women's Forum, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.